because so far we've been talking more on samatha about like brahma vihala uh like uh having the metta compassion rejoice it's much more on samatha because we take the concept of beings but it's good for us to practice because we are living in society we cannot do without compassion loving kindness to each other but today i was thinking that uh, if I'm going to talk some more on the about the 32 body parts, it's too difficult because we don't see our 32 body parts. And then the corpse, uh, contemplation of corpse is difficult. We don't get fresh corpse. <laughs> Actually, when I read the Pali, one of the Pali Tipitaka is talking about the corpse. That's, they call it wet. It's it actually talking about wet, wet corpse. It's not really wet, but it means that very fresh. To find the, if we want to do the Asuba meditation, we had to find fresh hops. So it's a really very good one, <laughs> very fresh one. <laughs> so it's also not easy for us to find this. So we cannot do that. And also, maybe it's good to do Vipassana. Okay, so let's go for Vipassana. Now, actually, with I think everybody know about Satipatthana Sutta, and but actually, people never I think seldom study the commentary. Like Mahasi Sayadaw, he actually has this book on the commentary also. When he explains all the terms, he actually refer to commentary, because commentary Atagata is actually written by very uh, senior monk, uh, maybe some as as old in the ancient time about like one or to our third century so it's good to learn from them and this one there will be session uh, like the contemplation of body and so on feeling consciousness mental object and so on okay All right uh okay so let us go for the first one first. Okay. Okay, we look at the beginning. Thus have I heard. At one time, the Blessed One was living in Gurus at the Kama Sadama, a market town of the Guru, Guru people. Okay, so later we will see who is Guru. And this is called Kamasa Dhamma. Then the Blessed One addressed the Bhikkhu as follows. This is the only way, O Bhikkhus, for the purification of beings, for the overcoming of sorrow and limitation, for the destruction of suffering and grief, for reaching the right path, for the attainment of Nibbana, namely for arousings, Rousings of mindfulness. Here, Satipatthana is translated in this way. But actually, sometimes Satipatthana we normally translate as a foundation of mindfulness. Okay. Now, when we study this sutta, it's good to study with the Atagata commentary. Okay. So, instead of going down, they continue. So, let us see. Uh, where's the commentary? Okay. Just now, I was talking about the guru. Okay, now this part, when we do a search, this is a uh, information about Guru. Oh, okay, now I also want to show some of the Bali. It's good if you want to uh, also tie in with the Bali. Okay, so we tie the need Satipatthana. You can find, where can you find this Sutta? Actually in the Dika Nikaya. Uh, is one of the sutta here. Hmm. Okay, Mahasatipatthana Sutta, which is uh, why we call it Mahasatipatthana Sutta because it's very, uh, we call it long version. The short version actually is in the this one, middle length discourse. Okay, so I have to do a search for this. Okay. Okay, we can find in the Mula Panyasa. Okay. 
it's also in other places and so on. Okay, so okay, anyway, we look at this Mahasatipatthana Sutta. Okay, now this guru, you can see the Buddha was staying in this guru. Now, where is this guru? Okay. Now, okay, the first section, Ewam Mesutam, thus have I heard. So, Satipatthana, this I refer to uh, the elder Ananda, the cousin of the Buddha. Right. So, at the first Buddhist council held in the Satapana cave in Rajagaha under the presid presidentship of the great disciple of the Buddha, Elder Mahagasapa. Okay. So, Elder Mahagasapa, he actually initiated this Buddhist council, means that all the monks they come and meet together and recite the Buddha teaching. So the Sutta Pitaka collection of discourses was recited by Ananda. So Ewa Me Suttam actually you can see in more Sutta refer to Me is by me. So this Sutta is heard by me who was Venerable Ananda. Then it followed by this place Ekan Samai at one place Bagawa. The Buddha was stay in the, this Guru in the country or the place called Guru. Okay. So it referred to many villages and market town and guru. And actually the commentary give a very interesting story about where's the place, uh, there are three continent, Pupa, Vihera, Apara, Goyana, and Uttara Guru. Okay. And then so on. And then the place called Kamasa Dhamma. Okay, and so on, all right. It's just a long story here. But anyway, it's talking about this place is a good place because why Buddha preached this very important sutta? Okay, here's the answer here. Because in this place, whether the Bhikkhu, Bhikkhuni, Upasaka, Upasika, they have good climate, okay? They enjoy the bodily uh, good condition. So they're always healthy in body and mind. So they are happy with healthy minds and bodies. They have the power of knowledge, were capable of receiving deep teaching. Therefore, the Blessed One, perceiving their ability to appreciate this profound instruction, proclaimed to them this uh, Satipatthana, we, we call it this cause of arousing mindfulness, which is deep in meaning. Okay, uh, about having set out the subject of meditation in Arashi in 21 places and so on. Okay. So the main thing is this sutta is actually given to people of this guru. Guru, okay. They have a very good, perfect climate and good, healthy and body and mind. Mm -hmm. So that's why they be able to appreciate this teaching, you can say perfectly. Okay. And then talking about this. They are very earnest to practice the Satipatthana. Even the servants, they will have mindfulness. Okay. If they ask each other, they will be talking about the mindfulness as well. Right. Okay. Now, when we talk about this sutta also, they are talking about the ekaya, no, the only way. Because this that's why this sutta also, somebody have a lot of opinion. Because when the Buddha talking about this ekaya, no, Right. The Buddha in a start already, he started about this Ekayano. Right. So here. So this is just an introduction where the Buddha was preaching this sutta at the guru. And then the Buddha said, Ekayano, one way, bika way. There's one path leading to purification of beings and so on. Okay. And then later the commentary will talk about this Ekayano. Okay. Now let, let's go back to the main sutta. Okay. Okay, I have to go back to the discourse. Yeah, okay. It's two together, all right, and so on. Okay. Uh I'm looking for the text of the Satipatthana Sutta. Okay, because this is a actually very big document with all the commentary. 
it's also not easy to find the text. All right, so I think better look at the right. So the Buddha said, "Ekaya no one way lead to the we should is purification, purification of beings mm -hmm. to overcome sorrow and lamentation." Sorry, yeah. The text also. Yeah, I to go to. Okay, to overcome sorrow and limitation, to to overcome the dukkha, dominasa, pain and grief, to uh, go for the right path to attain the nirvana. All right. So actually, in this sutta, it say clearly that. Beside the benefits of leading to purification, overcome pain and grief, and it will lead to nibbana. That is a four satipatthana. And then after that, the Buddha talking about the kaya, you all know that body, feeling, vedana, citta, the mind, and then after that, dhamma. All right? So this Sutta explain everything in detail and also give lots of information. All right, so we, we go back to commentary again. All right, then the commentary describe what is ekayano one this only one path. Okay, now actually the that's why here is a lot of uh, people discuss about this way about one way ekayano is it one way is the only way and so on. Okay, what is one way? Uh, I think sorry, ah, somebody is at the door. Wait for a while. Sorry. All right. So now this ekayano, people thought is uh, only one way. All right. Here may be one way, one path, and so on. Okay. And then the commentary say this one way means is uh somebody say it's one way means the only way to nibbana. But the commentary say actually it might be referred to only one person that you should practice satipatthana without any people, uh, without any companion. Okay, and some also say this way refer to the last one, the Buddha, and so on. So different opinion about this one way. And then some say it's only one way because it's going to Nibbana and so on. So actually, the commentary give all different opinion about this. Okay. Right. Then the commentary also explain why is the money of satanang visuddhi. Purification of beings. This means that cleansing of beings from the greed, hatred, delusion, from the defilements, and so on. All right. And then also Soka Paridewa, overcome the sorrow limitation. So by practicing the this satipatthana, one can overcome the sorrow and limitation. So that's the thing. And after that, overcome the grief and suffering. For normally the word dukkha refer to bodily suffering. Domanasa referring to the mental suffering. So we have two parts. Overcome the bodily suffering and mental suffering. Right? Uh, I, I will go for the main one first. Okay. And after that, reaching the path means the noble eight for path. And also to attain the nibbana. Okay. And after that, to be experienced by oneself. So when we study the Satipatthana, is the Buddha actually at the beginning part explaining the different benefits of practicing the Satipatthana, including the attainment of Nibbana. 
it's like uh, we call it a uh, good in beginning. So when we praise the sutta, it's good in the beginning, good in the middle, good in the end. Okay, good in the beginning means that the Buddha actually explained the benefits so on. Okay, and after that, the Buddha talked about four satipatthana, right? And then he, the commentary explained why is it four, because it's suitable for samatha and vipassana practice and so on. Okay, I think it's very it should we should do a search on the satipatthana. Okay, actually, I try to go online first is easy to get all the information and also one thing is uh you all also can access it so i think the best one will be so you can refer to this bante gunaratana okay so he's actually is a all right okay so this is the best book if you want to read about four frontier mindfulness, which is available in the internet PDF file. Okay, so you can download it. Okay. So we call it mindfulness in the plain English. Okay, so this is the best book for people who want to read it. And also, I think Sayadaw U Silananda, okay, U Silananda, he's a very, uh, very, he's the one that write a lot of Abhidhamma book. Oh, 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 okay, he's also available, so you all can read it. So, yes. Okay, so all these are very good reference book and very good uh, for us to read. Okay, so this is also a very good one for foundation mindfulness. It's good for beginners to read also. Okay. Okay, yeah. I think this is simple. Okay. Contemplation boy, introduction and so on. Okay, now you can see that the Uslananda, when he write, he also get the information from the commentary. He talk about the first Buddhist council and then the organized by Mahakasapa. All right. And after that, spoken, the sutta spoken by Ananda and so on. Right? So Ananda said, Ewa means the task they heard. And then the play is like, just now mentioned Guru in a place called Kamasa Dhamma. And then the talking about okay now this is the one that the Satipatthana Sutta. This is the only way because for the purification of beings, for overcome sorrow and limitation, for the experience of pain and grief, for reaching the noble path for realizing nibbana, namely the four foundation mindfulness. Now the the mention about this one, the only way, all right? So here is that that's a problem a lot, this one. Because people thought if we practicing Satipatthana, we cannot place practice other things, or only Satipatthana is the one that can reach Nibbana. Okay. So the commentary actually gives lots of explanation, like just now. I actually briefly go through about what is Satipatthana. And then the Usilana explained the only way in Pali, Ekayana means one. Ayana means way. So ekana means only way. Alright. The explanation is only way means single way. It does not branch off. There's no branches. So means that if you follow this way from beginning, you will definitely reach the deliverance. Okay. So this means that if you practice Satipatthana from beginning throughout the teaching you follow, you will reach the deliverance means the nibbana. Or the other way is you should be practiced alone. When you practice this, you should make it alone without companion. 
So you might be in retreat, but when you're practicing the Satipatthana, you are going on your one on your own way. Okay, so that's the only way. The third explanation of this way is the way of the one, way of the excellence, uh, way discovered by the Buddha. So Ekayana, another meaning is only in the teaching of the Buddha, dispensation of the Buddha, there is a four foundation of mindfulness. Okay. Or maybe here more specific is a noble effort path. Okay. So that's the meaning of Ekayana. Okay. And then uh, the benefits is starting to explain here for purification of beings, overcome sorrow and lamentation, like just now, okay? And then the uh, disappearance of pain and grief, reaching the noble path, and so on. Realization of Nibbana. So by practicing Satipatthana, Nibbana is, uh, can say, quite guaranteed. So in brief, the Buddha say, Satipatthana means purification of mind, overcome sorrow and limitation, overcome pain and grief, reach the Nibbana, uh, reach the novel path and realize the Nibbana. Okay. So far, after that, it will be definition of Satipatthana. Okay, now. So up to here, it's just a definition and benefit. After that, then it start to come about this. From here on on, it's an exact practice. How do you practice this? What are the four? Because we are four Satipatthana. So a bhikkhu dwells contemplating the body in the body, right? Ardent, clearly comprehending, mindful, remembering calmness and grief in the world. Okay, that, that's the first teaching and uh, a meditator should follow it clearly here. They dwells contemplating the body, kayanupasana, in the body. Ardent. Ardent means making effort. Clearly comprehending means that you uh, have a mindfulness and compre clear comprehension. And also removing the uh, covetousness is kind of like greed and grief is a uh, domanasa. So uh, means that your mind should not be too greedy and also do not have so much attachment and so on. So that's the starting point about here. Okay, let me see. Just now somebody was asking a question here. Mm. Uh, Rushan say a monk here claims Satipatthana belong to Bokia Dhamma. He is only access to Arahan. Actually, Satipatthana is belong to the Bo body Bokia Dhamma. That's mean that because Satipatthana will lead to enlightenment. So that's why it's belong to Bodhi Pakaya Dhamma. But Bodhi Pakaya Dhamma can be practiced by uh, anybody because if people need to practice this, then they can reach uh, Nibbana. So it's not just for the uh, enlightenment, uh, for the uh, Arya Savaka only. Okay, Rishan, that's your question. All right, okay. Now, up to here, is it clear? So just now, what I mentioned is just an introduction, and this is the this part we start to have the practice of satipatthana. There are many many writing about satipatthana. Okay, so you can see this is the with the commentary actually a lot. So this is a convention body. Yes, brother. Ko. Uh, yes. Yes. This uh, this Sati Patana, the name itself, uh, is actually Sati. Yeah. So, so it is only uh one of the factor in the noble eightfold path. So how can mm -hmm. it be the only way? That's, that's one thing that... Uh, yeah, right. My, so there it's is, a predominant. Sati is a predominant factor. But of course, when Sati is here, there must be have effort. So ardent means effort. Do you see this? Yes, yes. So when you have effort, then you also need to have clearly comprehending. This is talking about wisdom. Yeah. All right? Okay. And mindfulness also Sati. 
So when you practice satipatthana, the predominant factor is emphasis on the the, the uh, application of sati mindfulness. So it's like every sutta has their uh we call it every sutta yeah. have different way of practicing. All right, like if you practicing samatha is is more on a full concentration on one object and don't go for another object. Satipatthana have different various method. And it stress more on how you should contemplate it by using the sati as a predominant. Okay, so of course when sati you you also practicing other noble effort half factors. Okay, so okay. Th that is why the commentary just now it explained different way about the different terms for the this ekayano only one way. Okay, can you follow so far? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because the first time I read that it was the only way, I was shocked. Yeah, right, right, right. That, that's why the if you look at this commentary, no, oh, just now, okay, that's why I give you all this link. You all should read yourself. So you can see we are very lucky, you know, because when we, in, in last time, when everything is not on the internet, it's very difficult to find books. Now everything is internet. You can read what is sati, only one way. So it's a single way. Not double way. All right, another one. You should practice alone without companion. So that's a manner of ekayano. So another one is talking about is the way of the Buddha. That's the best one. Okay. And last one was talking about Nibbana also. So the we call it the commentary means written by commentator. Commentator means elders. That's why we call it our uh what we learn is Terawada. The we are following the teaching of the elder who write this commentary also. Okay. So one way is talking about the path nibbana. So that's why even the last time, many, many long time ago, you can see the Tiptaka Churanaga. You also have a discussion about this. And then the teacher say the way means it's a mixed one. Then the chula naga, so it's the way to mindfulness. The pupil say is the preliminary part. Then the teacher say is a mixed part. Okay. So even like last time, people also discuss about this topic. Okay. Because if you if we look at some of the suttas, you see some of those who get enlightenment does not, it's just an ordinary listener. So yeah, right, right. They, yes. Uh, that's, that's why I find so it. So they are using another way. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. So Satipatthana uh -huh. is one way. I would say Satipatthana is one way, but there are also another way because we have how many? According to commentary, all these are 84,000 Dhamma, which we don't have this number. I'm not so sure whether we exist, uh, but I think mainly all the common the commentary, they give this number, 84,000 Dhamma. So there are so many Dhamma. So Satipatthana, maybe it should be the one way, but this way is definite way to reach Nibbana because it already say very clearly in the beginning, okay, the Satanam Visuddhiya. That's why we memorize the Pali. So Soka, Pali Deva, and then after that, Dukkha Domanasa. The last one is, uh, there's, there's another one, Nibbana, yeah. Nyanasa Adhikamaya, Nibbana Sa Sachikriya, Etemo Nibbana. So you can say this way is a definitely way reach to Nibbana, okay? Okay, now after that, we will go for the Satipatthana already. We, we will go for the method already, okay? Now, so four method, right? There, there's a lot of text here. You all should read yourself, okay? Now, all right. Now, here, okay, Ida Bikawe. Of course, when you see the Satipatthana, when the Buddha gave Dhamma talk, he always used the word Bikawe. Okay? Bikawe. Now, you say the Buddha actually preached this sutta to the monks, but if the play is on guru, just now we say the Buddha purposely go and preach this sutta at a guru where people have a good body and mind mentality. They are living in a good place because of perfect climate. So not only to the monks, but the monks are predominant. 
okay but also according to the sutta bika way is uh Another meaning of bikawe, according to some texts, is people who are earnest and devoted to accomplish the practice of the teaching, right? But the bhikkhu refer to the, the one highest honor to fitness to receive manifold instruction. Okay. Now, this is a commentator. It says, those who follow teaching, be he a shiny one, dewa or human, is indeed called bhikkhu. So, sometimes we have other terms. Bhikkhu means refer to somebody who are striving in meditation. That's what we call it generally. All right? But normally, the bhikkhu refer to monks. When Buddha gives Dhamma talk, primarily to monks, but there are also some audience who come and listen to the Buddha's teaching. So, also refer to those who engage in the practice. That's the one, okay? And then the word start to, from the sutta, uh, actually the Patsati Patana Sutta, if any of you chant, there's one chanting by one of the monk, and I think it may be monk or still monk, and also, but it's very nice chanting. Now, okay, so the introduction, Sati Patana, talk about the Buddha go to Guru, then the after that, the Ekayano, seven benefits the here, after that, it start for what is for katame chataro. Now this sentence is repeating from kaya, then vedana, then chitta and dharma. So like just uh, contemplation of body in the body, contemplation of feeling vedana nupanasi, vedana so in the feelings, chitta nupanasi, contemplation of the mind in the mind. Then contemplation of Dhamma in the Dhamma. Okay. Then you can see here the Pali is very clearly. They need to have atapi. Okay. Atapi means effort. So when you practice this contemplation of Satipatthana, besides having the Sati, you see, Sati here, you also need to have effort. Sampajano means clearly comprehending. This refers to more on wisdom. Wisdom, normally we translate as a clear comprehension. So it's to do with wisdom also. So somebody needs to have effort, atapi, uh, sampajano, uh, with wisdom, satima, with mindfulness, and also vinaya is a jaran, okay. Uh, abhija is a removing the greed, abhija. Domanasa is a grief to the world. Uh, this word means our namalupa, not just the the normal world because when we are contemplating we are supposed to contemplate the sankhala in our own world so this is a very famous sutta so a lot of people actually in Myanmar also a lot of people do the recitation okay katame chatalo ida bikawe biku kaye kayanupasi viharati atapi sampajano satima vinaya loke abhija domana sam and so on after that then the Buddha start to talk about the Kaya Nupasana. Start the first one is Anapana. All right. So when we come to this part, Anapana is not only in breathing meditation as a, not only in a Samatha practice as breathing meditation, but it's also in Vipassana practice. Okay. Because you can see in the, this one, Kaya Nupasana. Actually, actually is actually if you all can read about it, it's actually very interesting. The just the Buddha say, how do you contemplate the body in a body? Uh, then the Buddha say the monk should go to the forest, the root of the tree, in an empty place, sunyara sida. Then the uh, uh, cross leg, keep the body straight, and then put the mind on the object. Then he breathe in. Breathe in in particular as asa sati. Breathe out is pasa sati. So he breathe in long, diga he know. He breathe in short, he also know. Breathe in, breathe out long, he know. Breathe in, breathe out short, he knows. Then he know the entire body. This one explanator. Then he experiencing the entire body. Then about the body sankala, body formation and so on. Okay. So here actually a lot of, need a lot of uh, explanation already. Okay. 
So what we know that is we you can use breathing meditation as satipatthana, right? And then they say why you contemplate the body in the body. That that's the thing here. So why this sutta is very famous because when you study this sutta, you have to study the Pali also to know the exact meaning. All right. Because the contemplate the body in the body means that you should not contemplate the feeling. You just need to contemplate the body only. Okay. Contemplate the body only in the property called the body. And when you contemplate the body, you don't contemplate it belongs to man or woman or whatever. Okay. You just contemplate it as the uh primary uh like for great elements or upadaya lupa and derive maturity. Or you contemplate as seeing the body hair and so on. And so you separate one by one, you separate like when in a banana tree, we call it plantain tree. When you open up the the we call it the outside, the skin one by one, so it come out. Okay. So what he see that there's no there's a Normally, we thought he see a man, woman, okay? But uh, this is just an ordinary perception. This perception coming from the wrong comprehension. Okay. Right? So, he should see according to the... Here, it says, according to the commentary, you should see like uh, 32 body parts and so on. Or if not, you in terms of Abhidhamma, the four Mahabuddha, great elements, and then the Upadaya, Lupa, and so on. Because if not, he's a shek. How do you pronounce Shrek means he's a bound. He's bound by, think about this is I, this is mine, and so on. Okay? There's a commentary as well about this. This means that Right. He should see something as impermanent, suffering, and non-self, and so on. Okay, so that's the meaning of seeing virade. Now, ardent atapi. So he need to have energy, effort here. Create comprehending, sampajano. You need to have the knowledge. So you see, you need effort. It's a noble. Noble effort, noble path. When you're practicing the four satipatthana, there's effort. There's also uh, knowledge, all right? And that means that you see clearly and so on. And mindfulness, there must be mindfulness, of course. Okay. And then... Uh, all right? Okay. So, yeah, we can stop for a while because it's actually a very long sutta. It's actually, if you read the commentary, it's actually interesting, but we still need to come back to the original Bali, all right? So, anyway, you just try to explain this kaya kaya nupasi. Contemplate the body in the body means that you don't contemplate the, uh, the feeling in the body. You don't mix up. When you contemplate the body, you should only focus on four great elements or the 28, uh, 24, the other derived material, or you see the 32 body parts. Okay? So that's the things about this kaya, kaya nupasasi. Means that try to see with effort, with uh, wisdom, with mindfulness, and not attached to the world, Abhijah is attached, okay? Not attached or do not have any grief to the world. So I try to mind, keep the mind free of these uh, defilements. That's the meaning of kaya, 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 nupasi. All right? Okay, I think that's enough. We have 42 minutes already. So uh, it's good we go for some practice, okay? All right. So, okay. Now, how should you practice? Now, remember when we talk about four foundation mindfulness, the first foundation is on the body. All right? So, like just now, the idea say, kaya kaya no basasi. So, when you, contemplate, uh, when you contemplate the body, you just take on the any body parts, like breathing meditation, or just now say 32 body parts also can, or four great elements. But the idea is, 
you need to have effort, mindfulness, uh, with wisdom also, and so on. Okay, so try to keep the mind on the body. And the question is, why should we keep the mind on the body? Because out of four, body, feeling, uh, kaya, vedana, chitta, and dhamma. So out of the body, feeling, uh, chitta, mind, and dhamma, the body is the gross one. So it's the easiest one. So it's much more easy if we focus on the body. It's, uh, that's why Mahasi said, according to Mahasi method, we start with the abdomen rising falling because it's very gross. It's so gross that if you put the hand on your abdomen, you can feel the wind moving. So we start with the Kaya Nubasana. Okay, so before we go for practice now, so any last questions? Saji. Yeah. I, I just wonder, because in the Sutta, if suppose uh, the monk do, because assuming they don't study Abhidharma then. How you know? Then, how you know they don't do study they Abhidharma? The, yeah, how do they know the 24 derived material? The... The four primary elements, yes, the in the sutta there is, but the twenty-four derived material is not there. Man. You don't seem to actually. Read. If you if you read the sutta, uh, you notice that in some of the sutta, uh, later I find some some for you. There are some sutta they mention about very detailed certain body parts. You know, even like a different type of feelings, uh, the dissex uh, feeling, the dissex contact, or whatever. There are some of the sutta give very detailed explanation. Okay. They also mentioned oh. maybe not as detailed as Abhidharma. Do you know that some of the sutta is like the information is scattered all around. It's only yeah. when you see the Abhidharma, you see things in detail. Actually, some of the sutta did mention about, uh, let's say, which one? Uh? The Hadaya, yes, it mentioned. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the talking about 32 body parts, actually, it mentioned in some of the sutta also. All no, right. that's why when I, when I look at the sutta, I tend to think that how how do I assume if I'm the monk there, how do I relate or no, the body in the body? How do I understand in that way? Okay, okay, because they learn from their teacher. Because remember Terawada. Terawada means they learn from the teacher. The teacher okay. learn from their teacher. Mm -hmm. So the instruction being passing by. You see, when the Buddha goes on, uh, he's, he's write the book, I think about 4th or 5th century, right? He said he wrote the book according to ancient commentary, uh, three ancient commentary, th three ancient commentaries that handed down to him. So he had the instruction from the very senior, senior teacher many, many years ago. Okay? So when, uh, you know the book, Vishwai Maga and Vimuti Maga, there are two books, they are very similar. One is called Vishwai Maga, path to uh, purification, another one called Vimuti Maga, the path of liberation. So these two books are very similar. So some people suspect they are copying for each other. But according to some analysis by foreigners, actually they have the same source. Means that they get the same idea from the same school or from the same senior uh, who are living in that place in the India at that time. So the knowledge is being passing on generation by generation to the books or through the verbal instruction. Do you get the point here? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when you learn here, like you learn the Abhidharma, so in future when you teach, you're actually passing the same information to the next generation, right? But where do you get your information now? You get the initial, uh, information from the Atagata, like just now Silananda, he get the information from the commentary we saw. Is He get actually from the same information. So the information been passing by generation by generation. Last time is by books, right? Before that is palm leaf, you know, manuscript, palm leaf. Hola so leaf. now we are lucky. La. Everything is on internet. <laughs> so students do homework is very easy. They just copy and paste only. <laughs> okay. No, but okay. not in. All right. So clear your doubts already. Okay. Huh? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So... Now, okay, so I think it's good for go for practice. So, uh, yeah, it's a Kaya Nupanasana. We haven't started with the breathing meditation. 
But uh, I think it's uh, good for us to do some like quiet Saturday right now. So after half 45 minutes of learning the Dhamma, so let us compose the mind. So focus on any parts of body you want or if you want to do breathing meditation or if you want to radiate loving kindness, it's okay. Okay, we do half an hour.